Wow. <laughs> and have you lived in Kekaha your whole life? Well, I came here when I was 16 years old. I was born in McBride. I was born in McBride. Uh huh. I came here when I was 16 years old. I worked for a company and married one girl from Kekaha. And uh, I used to like horses, so here I am. <laughs> And what are you working on now? Well, I'm making a nose band. Nose band for my friend. And that's for a horse? Yeah, for the bridle. I got I got this, but he don't want the rope guy. He wants the leather nose band. Yeah, I don't blame him. I'd like leather too. <laughs> I'm making a new saddle for my friend in New York. Then I picked up this stick for my friend in uh, Anahola. Fixing them all up. Uh huh. So this is what you do. You make saddles yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Then, then I make little trinkets like this. Wow. <laughs> Good decoration. You can have one. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And did you make that gadget? Huh? Did you make that gadget? No, no, I buy this. My friend bought it, but then he didn't know how to use it, so he gave them to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I train horses for people. And you train them too? Make extra, make extra money. So now you're retired, huh? Yeah, I retired. I, I had the... Uh, I had ten children, I lost two and I read eight. I hunt every weekend. What do you hunt for? Wild boars. Wild boars? Yeah. And then my daughter was Miss Kawai and then my wife died that year. Oh, what year was that? 1970. Uh, my daughter was Miss Kawai and then uh, my wife died 71. Wow, pretty sad, huh? Well, that's the way life is, huh? Yeah. You know, you always think you get them beat, but they get you beat. And so you have a different wife now? No, I don't have. I had one, and I had to divorce them. You had to divorce them. <laughs> you know, you know what you did. Tell, I'm a church person, and then when you're not thinking about church, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. <laughs> Life is too short, you know. You know, a lot of people, they lie. Somebody came to my house and told me about uh, religion, and I told them. They, they left, they didn't say anything. I tell them, you know, if you believe in anything, you get faith in what you believe. But if you don't have, then it's not going to work. <laughs> right. This all my dad's tools. My dad used to be a shoemaker before. And where did he live? He died uh, when I was 22 years old. And uh, where was he born? In China. In China? Yeah, in Canton. Good. They probably don't have shoes like this, uh, st tools like this anymore, no, huh? No, they have, but it's real expensive. They have in a book, but it's real expensive. And so, what did your dad come over here for? Well, he said, uh, in the old days, the Chinese used to fight among themselves, eh? the, the Republicans and the Democrats. Eh? Uh huh. So he said he didn't want to, he ran away, and he, he reached here. Then he got married before, and then he got divorced. He had two children, and then he remarried again, and he had four of us: had me and uh, three sisters. Yeah, life is wonderful. You know what you're doing. You know, right? And do something.
I make gourds. I do artwork on gourds. Oh. Well, I, make I, a do, I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's the way. Variety. Yeah. I make bridles. I fix saddles. See, this is the hardest thing when you gotta set up the work, you know? Right. Well, you got a real nice shop here. Well, it's not a shop, but I got all my tools here. I used to be a mechanic. I was a heavy equipment operator and then I used to work in a shop off season. Uh -huh. And when the sugar company doesn't grind, then they put me in a shop. But I used to overhaul cars here before I had my beam here. But then when you do too much favor for people, they don't appreciate. Right. So I stopped doing that. So I used to train horse. And I used to help a lot of people. And they still don't appreciate, so now I charge them. If you want, you come here, you pay the money, half of the money, and then when you take the horse, you pay me the other half. Right, good setup. Yeah, because, uh, you know, people, it's not all honest people in this world. And they cannot give you or, or share your talent because they're so greedy. You know. So what do you think about the sugar mill closing? Well, I, I'm real sad because I grew up in this single mill. You see, I work here from 16 years old. I got my birthday this week and next week I was hired when for a job because I used to take care of my dad and my three sisters. In the old days, they only get social security, $27 for the spouse and $18 pension for the, you know, for the children. And, uh, and we couldn't make $100 a month in the old days. So it was real hard, so I had a hard time. But it was not bad, it was hard, but you learn a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's why I tell these people here, they come here, and how the people I tell them, you know, you come here, we were here, we, we work at a plantation, we live like a plantation people. Not that we gotta meet the Joneses, or you know, like the idea we, the way we live. Right, on the, on the mainland, everybody's gotta keep up with the Joneses, have a fancy I car. Them, I told them, no, not here, because I tell here, we were, these houses were built for the plantation workers. We had no money, and we had to live simple like this, you know, raise our own things and whatnot. But, so this guy is pretty good, but uh, you know, I get some people come here and they want to the way they want to, and uh, I don't think that can happen. Right. But it's happening, you know, because they don't want to go out and voice their opinion. Eh? Uh huh. While everybody else is sleeping, they go out and voice their opinion. <laughs> So now do you own your house? Yeah. You Did you buy it from the sugar company? Yeah. At that time, they sold them to us cheap. Because they're kicking some people out of their houses up on El Apayo. Yeah, well, uh, they, that land wasn't there. So they had to. You see, they had the opportunity to buy property that they didn't want to. Right. At the same time with us. They didn't want to, so. You know what happens when you get the opportunity? You've been down Kikaha Road over here. You know where the uh, service station is? Uh huh. All that section. They're kicking them out. They're, they're not kicking them out, but they gotta buy. If not, they're gonna be out too. So, you know what that means? Yeah. And some people over there had the opportunity to buy property for the same price that we bought. Uh huh. But they, they, they sold them. They bought them and then they sold them. Now, now they gotta buy them double the price, the amount that we paid for. 
Well, they made a mistake. They gotta suffer with it. Isn't that right? I suppose. Yep. They're sorry now. Well, yeah. Not not kicking them out. You see, the land belongs to the state. I see. You know. Well, I want to thank you for letting me do this. Well, no problem. That's I very think. nice. I'm going to do this because my friend going to come for it. So then we're going to train horses. Uh huh. I get one horse for train over there. I still train in horses. So. <laughs> my friend's getting some cement poured, so I told him I would come down and film his cement being poured.